Okay, so it's rel relatively clear here that females uh, did better overall, regardless of class, but did much better in first class and always better than their male counterparts. Okay, so um, if we try to uh, examine a little bit the syntax here, the ggplot calls in the dataset Titanic, then it uh, identifies people in terms of their sex, uh, and we fill in the uh, male-female, the sex categorization, we populate that in color that uh, respecting did the individual survive or not survive. And then uh, this just provides us with this team uh, in the background. The facet wrap then breaks that apart for the different classes. So class, first class, second class, third class, that's the facet wrap. And then it is, the syntax here is that it's a bar chart we're going to put in labels on the y-axis, passenger count, on, on the x-axis we have sex, and then on the title, Titanic survival rates by class and sex, by class and sex. Okay, so next question then is, fifth question, what is the distribution of passenger ages? Um, take a look at that. And you can see that uh, in these er earlier years, so children, less numerous than 20 year olds there seems to be a peak here in terms of the frequency of 20 year olds so perhaps when people get to the age of 20 they get uh, itchy feet and want to move it's probably an age cohort that's more likely to uh, emigrate than 60 year olds uh, probably a substantial portion of the passengers are people intent on uh, leaving Europe going to America and emigrating uh, and then there's a kind of a longer tail here so it's a kind of an interesting distribution sixth question what's the survival rates by age so when we take a look at this it would appear those uh, younger people did somewhat worse to some degree now that might reflect the class also uh, was there sub were they overrepresented in third class this cohort? Uh, younger people, uh, again depending, but they seem to have survived perhaps a little bit better than the overall. So the younger you are, some evidence that you're surviving more than fifty percent of uh, young uh, survived. Um, then when you got to twenty, less than half survived, probably more than half survived and so on, uh, perhaps not a bad age population, age group, and again we're not making any reference here to sex. Another visualization for this question is a box and whiskers, so we'll take a look at that, and using the uh, syntax here of the geometric uh, box plot, um, when we look at the, the median age for those who perished as opposed to those who uh, who survived uh, it's not dramatically different um, so at first glance here uh, there isn't striking evidence that the younger you are the, the stronger the survivorship at least it's not uh, stark okay now later when we examine this um, the figures here we, we get slightly different results and we will go through those figures in a little bit more forensic detail uh, so, at a preliminary glance, not compelling evidence to say age is a factor. Later we'll see it probably is, right? Later we will see, but we'll have to explore that uh, using, uh, with some reference to the non-linearities that it seem to exist in the population. Seventh question, what is the survival rate by age when segmented by gender and class? And this is where perhaps some of the detail can be broken down. Now this is giving us a density distribution. It's useful. Um, would appear that for first class males survivorship was uh, quite good, but then for the females wasn't that um, uh, good for first class in, in comparison to those who uh, drowned. 
Uh, again, uh, for second class, the youngsters seem to have done better. Uh, and in third class, the youngsters seem to have done better compared to the peers. So that's, uh, that is giving us some kind of initial indication. Perhaps if we use the histogram, we might uh, explore that and get some stronger visuals. When we look at the histogram here, again, uh, the females didn't do well here, but there's just, they're few in first class. Uh, and the younger ones, this is age, this is survived, and age-wise, so there may be one case here where first class passenger who was young didn't survive. The males here in first class seem to have done well. In second class here, the males did well who are young. Again, if you're younger, you seem to have done quite well. If you're in second class, and we're also, f and in this case, female. In third class, you did better here perhaps than if you were here. So at this early age, you your survivorship was a bit stronger. And here also perhaps less so, less compelling, but perhaps we could say survivorship a bit stronger if you're younger, but not convincingly. So we do have evidence here, some limited evidence that the younger you are, under certain circumstances, right, uh, survivorship one, survive, survivorship was a bit better. So that's something we'll examine more detail as we progress when we apply logit models and uh, conditional trees and classification trees, classification and regression trees. Okay, so, uh, okay, we can do a little bit, examine the, the fare. Um, the fare could be important here, it could be a proxy for um, the class. So the higher the fare, perhaps uh, we might contend greater survivorship. What was the average fare for everybody? It, uh, if we look at the average fare, 33 pounds. If we look at the median fare, median fare, so we're saying Titanic, and summarize, so aggregate the data to be a median and report the median fare, and we get a single metric output. And you can see here that the median is substantially lower than the mean. The median is lower than the mean, substantially lower. So there must be quite a bit of skew here. And some evidence suggests that the, uh, some individuals paid quite an amount for their tickets relative to others. So there's some kind of, uh, we have skew in the population uh, at first glance. Uh, the mean fare for men uh, is 26. Okay, which is a bit lower than the overall population mean fare. And the mean fare for women, if we run that, is 46. So the mean fare for men is a good bit lower than the mean fare for women. And again, uh, that might present some issues. Perhaps we might be able to look at the fare as a predictor of survivorship, and perhaps not, right? Um, okay, so it may not just be class. Uh, Titanic, we filter by sex, male, summarized to median. So the median fare for men is ele was £11.88. Uh, and then for women, median fare for women was 23 Again, another substantial difference between the men and the women in terms of the typical fare that's being paid. Um, okay. Uh, we can also set up uh, pivot tables. Pivot tables is something that we generally uh, identify as being a strength uh, that we use in Excel. Uh, we can also set up pivot tables as well in uh, R and in the tidyverse using um, by aggregating the data and then arranging in a certain order. So we're going to arrange here by class. So what? we're going to try to identify here is take the Titanic data set, we're going to group by class and sex, we're going to summarize um, the fare, inter estimate the mean fare, count the number of passengers in each category, in each instance, and then arrange by the class, so first class, second class, uh, third class. Okay, so let's just take a, a run that. Now that's come over here. And to view that, we can just go view, and we invoke this file here. So let's uh, view, and the R Studio viewer opens up, and what we find is uh, the mean fare for women. So first class, second class, third class. We organize by sex. So if we break it down by female and male, and again, in each instance, what we find, women seem to pay more. 
So for second class, 23. The mean fare for men was 19. For third class, the mean fare for women was 15. For the mean fare for men was 12. And the bulk of passengers seem, seem to be in third class. Okay, so we go back in and we pivot Titanic. Again, this is going to be the same as before, except we take the median values. Okay, so exactly the same exercise as before. And we view, to view it in the RStudio viewer, we view this file that we created. So we save this data set, we subset it out using the tidyverse syntax, this subset of data, and we're going to view it. It's come in here, pivot fair one, and we've estimated the median fare for female and male. Again, quite a gulf between both. Um, and we see that the females are paying substantially more. Again, I'm not sure why. Perhaps there was more creature comforts um, that the uh, female population were able to avail of. And again, I'm not uh, privy and not quite sure why that pricing applied. But it, it does seem to be a bit of a difference, which I found a little bit interesting and a little bit stimulating. Okay, the 10 question, how does class, sex, and fares mean median values influence survival? Okay, so let's, we move on to a new pivot table, and we report out, and we view, and again, now we've added in an additional, um, uh, did they survive or not? Okay, so what perhaps we might be interested in here is if you paid substantially more, did you have a better chance of surviving? Actually, when we look at this, uh, there's a f only five, of course, here in this category, but there's females and males who perished in first class and females and males who survived in first class. And although you paid more here slightly, you're, you didn't you didn't survive, right? So the people who drowned actually paid uh, more than the people who survived, just marginally. Um, and again, the same is tr not true in this instance. The males who paid more survived. The females who paid more didn't survive. Uh, again, here, females... No, in, in second class, if you paid a bit more, you survived. Uh, and again, that's true for the males. If you paid a bit more, your average or me mean fare a bit higher you survived and these ones were paying a bit less now again it's, it's too marginal really to call this and i don't know if it's really a factor here um uh, again here 18 compared to this these ones um perished these ones survived again doesn't seem to be any strong relationship between fair mean they fair paid and survival and so on the evidence is very mixed okay um and we do the same again but for median right and we'll view that and again i think we're seeing something similar uh the median fare here was higher didn't survive the median fare here was lower in first class they did survive so maybe there's age or something that's uh we might examine here but the fare itself is not necessarily particularly inside a particular class, it's not predicting necessarily survivorship. Um, okay, 11, uh, 11 question, does the departure, so point of debarkation, point of departure influence fare? So there was three points of departure. There was um, Cherbourg in France, Southampton in UK, and there was uh, Queenstown, which today is Cove in Cork, uh, Ireland, in County Cork, Ireland. So let's just take a look at this. The pivot fares, breaking it down by the class and where they uh, boarded the ship. Uh, and then we arrange by class. So let's just run and view. And when we look here, so there was a f two people for which we don't know their point of departure, their port of that they embarked from. Uh, see here is Cherbourg, Queenstown, Southampton. Uh, what we can observe here, just purely in terms of the cost, Cherbourg was more expensive than Queenstown was more expensive than Southampton. 
Okay, so in the next video, I will uh, finish out uh, the just explanation here, my observations relating to this pivot table.